Why hello to you, my man? I am Benjamin and he is Jonathan. We are the 442 dudes. Oh, you're laughing like that. <laughs> carry on, carry you know, on. I'm just embracing it. And hello, welcome <laughs> to another episode of 442 <laughs> Dudes. <laughs> He's trying his best. But in any case, you know, we embrace oh, all yeah. forms of diversity. Yes. So just in case, you know, you happen to be from uh, Jamaica, Nigeria, <laughs> watching this, we want to say hello to you. Nigeria, uh, scare you. <laughs> they call this the dashiki, I believe. So, you know, I'm proud okay. to wear this dashiki. See, you scare, yeah. you scare, where's my ball, uh, Nigerian <laughs> scammer, where's my ball? Oh yeah, oh, speaking of the ball, you know, the reason why the balls are not here today, that's because we've already reached the final episode for this season. Uh, uh, I mean, thank okay. you everybody for uh, watching our, our episode, yeah? Yes, thank I you I love so until we're going to die already. Uh, but yeah, don't uh, forget, you know, to follow our other episodes as well. If you haven't been following our previous episodes, our first one, don't forget, 442 Dudes, you know, we have a lot of the episodes, go and watch them. Most importantly, don't forget to smack that subscribe button. I promise I'm not scamming you. I'm just saying. He's dying. He can't stand me wearing this. So again, don't forget, subscribe. We'll come we'll come back with our next one. Then the segment is called What's the next segment? Damn it. <laughs> 90 minutes off. Yeah, 90 minutes off, huh? Yes. It's you soon. I promise I do not scam you. Oh. Alright guys, I've come down. Much better now. Hopefully. No more laughing, no more tears. I wiped them dry already. Uh, but anyway, welcome to this segment called 90 Minutes Off. And for today's episode, we are going to focus on the end of season on a roll. So we will be looking at a few categories and I think we'll kickstart the first category with the best manager. Ah, okay. Uh, yes. Okay, but before you go in, yeah. before you go in there, okay, right, I just want okay. to share with you guys, there are some candidates that we felt probably, you know, they can, yeah. they probably be winners of some of the multiple categories. But to make it more interesting, we felt that they can only win one category. Yeah, very fair. Yes, there yeah. you go. All right, so let's kick start. Best manager, yeah. Ben, let's go. Well, okay, for me, um, before before I name mm. my best manager, mm -hmm. I have to give a special mention first, okay? okay? So before I let everyone know who my choice for best manager of the season, my special mention has to go out to Phil Parkinson of Wrexham. I think mm. he's done a fantastic job. Okay. Uh, given with the players that he has, he, he gelled them together and uh, yeah, you know, and eventually they got promoted. So I got to give a special mention to Phil Parkinson. But... Promoted with yeah. the oh, most yeah. highest number of Yeah, points. yeah, correct, yes. correct. With that as well. Mm. But to me, this guy takes it all. I might be a little biased here, but I'll explain why. Okay. I think the best manager of the season for me goes to Jose Mourinho of Roma. <laughs> why? Why do I say that? That's because, you know, I think for every club that he goes to, you know, he's, he's killing it. I'm just saying, he's killing it. People say that he's washed out, he's done, he's no longer the special one, but whatever it is, I'm just saying, he's winning it with a lot of the clubs he's been, mm -hmm. except for Spurs. Uh, but yeah, you know, with, hey, Ro with he brought Spurs to the he, final. He, he did, he did, yes. he did, he did. Don't he did, forget he did, that. He did. But with Roma now, you know, not only have they won last year mm -hmm. uh, the Europa Conference League, but this year, mm -hmm. they may have that possibility of doing two things in the finals. One is not just winning the uh, Europa League, mm -hmm. but also finally, perhaps the throwing Sevilla. Ah, because Sevilla yes. has been a, a strong contender. Mm. And in our previous episode, you know, I've been saying that Sevilla is like the real Madrid oh my God, of the Europa League. I'm pronouncing pro it right. Yes. I know. I know. I learned. Maybe because of dash, <laughs> Dashiki. Anyway, well, who is your manager of the uh, season? Who is my <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so my manager of the season is Roberto Di Zerbi. Okay, so... Uh, like likewise, yeah. I think there are a few candidates I was thinking about. Uh, obviously, Pep Guardiola. Okay. Um, but why I chose Deserby over Pep or even yeah. Arteta is yeah. very simple. I look at expectations versus the achievements that they have they have done this season. So yeah. when we think of Man City, we think of winning the, the it's, it's it's almost a given that they win the Premier League, yeah. right? And because they bought Haaland, everybody expected them uh, to be in the yeah, final course. back in the finals of the Champions League. So in a way, it's kind of expected, mm. right? The FA Cup, I think they've always been very strong in the cup games. So with, for Man City to be, you know, on the verge of winning a treble, I, I think that that's more or less expected, mm -mm. right? But whereas for Brighton, it's a different story altogether, right? And don't forget, uh, De Zerbi came into the English game oh, yeah. as an unknown, right? Everybody wrote him off, right? Who are you? Why are you? Why are you hiring guy? And they just, they just, you know, Porter just left for Chelsea at the point yep. of time. Yep. So, for for De Zerbi to come in, take whatever Porter left behind, and actually improve the squad, mm. and then 
and actually qualifying for Europa, I thought that is, to me, mm-hmm. it surpasses all the other managers, including Eddie Howe. Because I really thought about Eddie Howe as well. Yeah, yeah, you but do. But I think do, those do. are expectations which versus Which is why I'm quite surprised. Which is, yeah, so that's why I say mm-hmm. expectations versus achievements. Wow. I think this will be this derby totally triumphs over all the other managers. Wow. I mean, you, you, just, you just think about it, right? Well, Brighton basically lost all their players, mm. right? They lost Bisuma, they lost Trossard, they lost Maupe, um, Mwepu went, well, which retired halfway, Kukurela went to, to Chelsea. But they brought in a lot of unknowns. Estupinian was fantastic this oh, season. Yeah. Kaisido came up. Uh, Mitoma was fantastic this season. Um, Welbeck kind of like was revitalized. Yeah. They brought in Gilmore, Billy Gilmore. Mm. Uh, they also brought in some Argentinian youngsters, right? Uh, Buonate and, uh, and Ciso, uh, uh, Paraguay, I think, right? And also... Their local Evan Ferguson, oh, yeah. the striker, has Who's been doing scoring. Quite good. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And sure, it's sure. not just about winning games, though, but they are playing such. With passion, exactly. with gusto. It's, and how do I say? The, the, the football on display by Brighton is just brilliant. It's, I love watching Brighton right now. I, I mean, if, if you want me to, to also add on, you know, if, mm. if you don't mind me chiming yeah, in, yeah, I, going, I, going, I going. think it's uh, to, to put it in the way, I think they have evolved yes. from a mid tier team mm. to now a top four contending team. And which congratulations to them, they are that close. Okay. Yeah, yeah. If you ask me, yeah. they're, they're, that, they're that close. Right. So so those were our, our candidates for, yeah. for manager of the season. Let's move on to the next category. And this is best player. Okay. So who is best player? Well, I mean, you? I started it now. Let, okay. Let's hear from you. I mean, who will be your player of the season? Well, for me, it's very straightforward. Okay. Erling Haaland. Oh. oh, oh. I, I, think to, to, I think this name, I don't think anybody will dispute. Yeah. To be very frank. Okay. For, for obvious reasons, right? He, he's the, the highest goal scorer in, in all competitions across all the football leagues in the world. And a young lad. Uh, yes, and it's 22, only 22. He has 52 mm. goals this season. And the last time we heard about such numbers was when Ronaldo and Messi were in their prime. Mm-hmm. Right? Even, you know, they'd be hyping out Mbappe, but Mbappe only has 40 goals this season. Mm. So, I think this is something that, you know, and, and oh, I also want to add on. Okay. He came in the Premier League. This is his debut season. Yeah. He basically just wiped out all the records that's been there from the start. Oh yeah, in the debut season. Exactly, in mm-hmm. his debut season. And he's, the, the scariest part is he could have scored a lot more even be, not because of Pep wanting to protect him. Right. If you remember, there was a period of time, I think for a month or so, he was only playing 60 minutes per game. And in those 60 minutes, he scored two goals, he scored three goals, scored four goals. Pep said, no, 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 enough, enough, enough. So can you imagine the amount of number, the number that he could have hit? If could Pep, have increased. If Pep didn't want to protect Messi. Uh, I mean, if Pep didn't want to protect Haaland. Haaland. Right? So I, I thought... There's this is no there's no competition really. Oh, so, so therefore, yours? well, mine uh, has to be quite um, different, you know. I, mm-hmm. I think you know I, I would have thought myself to pick Erling Haaland as well, mm-hmm. uh, but I think mm-hmm. after going through it, I felt and I've mentioned his name before. Okay, and I have no idea how to pronounce his name, but it's okay. Bruno Gamaris. Uh, mm-hmm. I think Newcastle. Des- yeah, I think he deserves uh, 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 to be the, my player of the season. I think okay. you know if you look at it with every game that he participated, stats have shown you know. Mm. Uh, Newcastle rarely loses. You when know, he's playing. Yeah, when he's playing. When okay. he's in the squad. When he's mm-hmm. in the squad. Uh, they've been quite good. He's been the backbone of it, you know. Uh, his passes. And I think just his foresight of the game. And there's something about him that, that brings passion. I've been following ah. some of his social media posts. And uh, I think that, if I'm not wrong, there was even one with him bringing the toddler around. Ah. And he, he has a picture of uh, the Newcastle home. And it says, it in, in the caption, yeah, yeah, it says home. <coughs> home. You know, and to him, he calls it home. Wow. So, so I feel that um, if anything new, we talk about how Newcastle is now banging it, you know, all the way, bringing back top four and, and the glory of the Champions League, perhaps. Mm-hmm. And if you're a Newcastle fan, you know, it, it's a great time to be alive, <laughs> you know, because you finally see them out of that that that, that zone and now yeah. they're, they're top four. But I think it really boils down to, I mean, all the players that they bought, you know, equally done well. But mm. I think really the <laughs> backbone of it is Bruno Gamares. Mm. So therefore, he's my player of the season. That's true. Yeah. So we talked about the player of the season. Mm-hmm. Now let's go a little bit more younger. Okay. The young player of the season. Mm. Now who's going to be your young player of the season? Okay. Before I go there, I think I forgot yeah. to mention something okay, about best please. player. Yes. So I just want to give a special mention to Harry Kane. Oh, why? Eh? Because if it's not because of Haaland, oh, I then, think uh, we'll be right. praising Harry Kane to the heavens. Right. And which is the English media sort of exactly, thing. Exactly. You know? Correct. Okay. Yeah. I mean, he has got 28 league goals this season. He has really broken all the Spurs record. Yeah, he, yeah. He's now only second behind Shearer in mm-hmm. all-time mm-hmm. Premier League mm-hmm. mm-hmm. uh, uh, goal-scoring record. So, I mean, if not because of Haaland, Kane well, We been, could have been focusing Kane, on Harry Kane. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, so now let's coming back to the best young, young player. player okay, for me, yeah. I, I thought really, really very hard for this. Okay. In fact, I kept changing 
uh, my answer. Yeah. But I think I found the, in my opinion, the correct answer. And who would that be? So my answer is Jude Bellingham. Wow. Jude Bellingham of Dortmund. And here's, okay. here, and here's my reason why. I think Jude Bellingham has basically, to, to, to steal your word, yeah. right? Uh, irony, right? Since you're the Nigerian mm-hmm. scammer yeah, today. I mean, but to steal your word, true. okay, I think he has evolved okay. this season. Okay. Right? To a point where he has become such a focal point, okay. such an important aspect of the team that whichever team he goes to, mm-hmm. he is going to just basically improve any team in the world. And I see any team. Okay, so will you equate that to the same sort of a success that Haaland brings? Yes, that's wow, why I thought wow, about Bellingham. Okay. No, if you really think about it, so for okay. Dortmund, this season, they lost Haaland. Mm. Don't forget, Sancho left last season mm-hmm, as well to join mm-hmm, Man United, mm-hmm. right? And they actually brought in Sebastian Haller, mm. <clears throat> Haller to, to come and replace Haaland. Mm. But because of whatever reasons, he couldn't play. I'll talk about it later. Right, so they basically the 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 the, re- the weight of responsibility fell on his young shoulders, mm. but he rose to the challenge. Yep. Dortmund did well in the Champions League. They are now one win away yeah, from winning the Bundesliga. Close. Yeah, that's exactly. Close. So and don't forget his performances for England in the World oh, Cup. Yeah. Oh, so yeah, yeah, in yeah. my opinion, he's probably England's best player in the World Cup. Mm. So to me, I think he deserves to to win the best young player. Wow. Mm. Okay. So you are going with uh, Bellingham. Yep. Uh, I'm going with someone uh, who sort of um, again, you know, I have a thing for people who. Who, when appearing in stats, they sort of uh, have this thing where the team doesn't lose at all. Mm. And I'm going to mention this guy now, Rafael Liao of mm. AC Milan, mm. 23 years old guy. Yep. Okay. Uh, well, whenever he plays in the Milan team, you see his name in the team sheet. Milan rarely loses. Mm. Let's take for example when you know up against say Liverpool. When mm. he wasn't in the the squad, they lost. When he was in the squad, they won. So, oh, okay. you know, I, I think there's an impact that he has. And we don't just focus on that as well. We focus on the league itself, mm. you know, the Syria R. Mm. Pronouncing oh, it right, right. Well, I, I'm telling you, it's, 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 it's the dashiki. It's the dashiki. Okay. <laughs> anyway, it's so moving to that. Um, really, I think in his performance so far, you know, I, it's a decent amount of goals. Not mm. the top, but decent amount of goals. Mm-hmm. I mean, a little bit of injury here and there. Yep. Uh, but still, managed to come back from that. Mm. And uh, last season, he was doing quite well. This season, not as great in my opinion, mm. but picked up himself. And mm. because of that, I think Milan is where they are. They they, they unfortunately didn't go through. Uh, it was Inter Milan who went through in the end. But I thought AC Milan, in my opinion, you know, they, they did what they could. And Liao, yeah. But AC Milan were the reigning champions though. They, they, I mean, they kind of... They, they won yeah, Serie yeah, yeah. A last season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but this, this season, season they, they correct. So this season. Just, but because of that, I, I don't want to put the blame on Liao itself. But to me, he's still the, the young player of the season for me. Okay. Yeah, because okay. We're, we're focusing on young player. Okay. So therefore, okay, I think, okay. you know, yeah, I think he stands well, up. Fair enough, fair enough. So, so do you think, I think my, my question right now sure. is, so I think a lot of talk has been about Mbappe and Haaland being yeah. the next two. They're, they're, yeah. they're, they're going to take over Messi and Ronaldo yes. in, in the Ballon d'Or. The whole hype and, and all that. Think, yeah. Uh, so do you think it's just really going to be Mbappe and Haaland? I'm going to say something that may not float in certain people's head. Mm-hmm. There is no Mbappe. There is only Haaland. That's my thing. There is no for this wow. season alone. There is no. Mbappe. We're not talking about this season alone. Yeah. We're talking about in the future. Yeah, then, I think right? if you're going to talk about the future, we're going to talk about longevity. Yeah, yeah. If you're going to talk about that, yeah. to me, Haaland is still going to be way ahead only because not only is he young. I'm saying this from a f- person who's not even supporting Man Mbappe City. Yeah, young, huh? yeah, they're both young, but you know, Haaland's a little bit younger than that. That's two years, which is the same yeah, as Ronaldo yeah, and but, Messi. But, yeah. But, but, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, but he okay. still has the age, right? But this is why I'm going to say Haaland is a team player. Mbappe doesn't seem to really be, to me. But in terms of goal scoring records, right? Yeah. Mbappe is second. Yeah, yeah, the, the, I mean, he's second, forty goals. Yeah, yeah, you sure, know? second. But you know, PSG doesn't really do that. He carried. Yeah. He literally, he he literally did, yeah, carried he did, he France did. to the World yeah, Cup yeah, final. Yeah, he did. But you know, for PSG wise, if really? you're again talking about the 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 whole thing, I I, I don't see. It. Yeah. Wow, yeah, I don't I know. Don't I, I, what what do you guys yeah. think? I yeah. mean, th- this is really quite a big big statement to to make. Yeah, yeah, that, that is my big Haaland. statement. But I'll tell you where Haaland fits. Haaland fits in in the next category for me. The best signing of the season, I feel he is okay. the by far the best signing of the season. Okay, not necessarily the best player. Only two reasons why. Number one, he's already very good before he came to Man City, mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. we already expect him to to yep. do some form of impact. And number two, again, I said team player. That's mm, just it. Okay. The team player factor. And because of that, you know, they're perhaps going to be in the trouble. Mm. Man City. So I think best signing. Okay. Best signing okay. for me. And I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't disagree with that. Yeah. For me, um, 
for me, I think I've mentioned his name. I mentioned his team many, many, many times over the course yep. of this uh, season's uh, podcast, right? His name is Kavicha Kavarats Kavala- Helia. Oh, finally got it right. Yeah, finally, finally got it right. Yeah. yeah. To me, I think he's, he, he is the reason why Napoli are being Napoli this season, right? Okay. It's because of him that kind of sparked the, that chemistry between mm. Victor and mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it's his first season here. Previously, mm. and he, all his all his footballing career, right, was in back in his hometown of Georgia, mm. his home country of Georgia, and also in Russia. So because of the, because of the war, he had to leave his mm. Russian club and mm. Napoli snapped him up mm. as a 22-year-old, as a 21-year-old for that matter, right? So, and to come in, into a foreign league, he basically just tore it up. Wow. Right? He tore it up. I mean, we have seen his performances in the Champions oh, League. We've oh. seen his performance in the Serie A. He's, we've seen his chemistry with Victor. Okay. Or so to me, I think he is really the best signing. Better than so many others. I mean, there, there are a lot of candidates. I mean, I, I know I know you are yeah, going to yeah, say yeah. a few things, but I just yeah, want yeah. to give a shout out to some other other candidates. I think Kim Min-jae also has been a fantastic oh, signing yeah. for oh, Napoli. Yeah, 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 I think yeah, Julian yeah. Alvarez has been fantastic for yep. City. Yep. Casimiro has been fantastic yeah, yeah, for United. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think for United sure. are where they are because of Casimiro, yeah. in my oh, opinion, wow, wow. really. Big, big opinion. Uh, you talk about Newcastle. Okay. You have Nick Pope. You have, uh, uh, you have Botman. Mm-hmm. Right. Newcastle this season are joined yeah. are the joint team for the lowest number of goals conceded with Man City at 32. Last year, they conceded 62. So But this year, improved. Exactly. Exactly. So there are a lot. There are a lot of candidates. I agree. There but I lot, think in terms lot. of impact, in terms of what impact plus yep. the achievements, I think Cavaros Helia wow. wins hands down. Okay, that's my opinion. Okay. Mm. And then the next one, team of the year. Now, who's going to be the team of the year for you? I'm going to go with Brighton for mine. Only mm. because because Brighton is you know the the, the, the decked with a lot of problems at the start. Mm. Um, as we said, Potter is leaving, and therefore the new guy came in, yep. uh, and then players started leaving, and, and nobody really saw them to be contending. Mm-hmm. And as I've said, I mean they contended well, and yeah, they do deserve to be where they are. Mm. And to me, team of the year. Why I didn't choose Man City because Man City is touted to win anyway. So, you know, it's like not a surprise. Mm-hmm. Whereas for Brighton, everyone's like, oh, they're not going to make it, you know. If my, my team goes up against Brighton, yeah, I'm probably going to win. But nope, that's not the case mm. this season. So therefore, team of the year, Brighton. Okay. And yours? My, my, I'm just going to the obvious. I'm going to Man City. Why? Oh. So, I, I, I see where you're coming yeah. from. I understand where you're coming yeah, yeah, from. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Let's, if we look at it objectively, right? Yeah. Uh, like how I decided that Z- Deserby probably deserves the best manager okay. because I looked at expectations versus right, achievements. Right, right. But if I look objectively at it really... So best team... So what to me, what what qualifies as the best team is how consistent you are. Okay. How, how, you, how much entertainment you bring to the game mm. and then what kind of... Uh, value you bring to the game. Okay. Right? And to me, I think Man City just wins hand down, hands down for all this. Wow. I mean, you think about it, the players they have brought in, what Pep has done in Man City, I know a lot of people say without money, Pep is nothing, mm-hmm. right? He cannot do, mm-hmm. he cannot bring a club like Millwall, you oh. know, the Champions League and all those, or even Rex him all up. But in my opinion, if you think through his his Barca teams, yeah. and even now the City teams, right? Yeah. I'm just going to give two instances where he kind of influenced football. I'm talking about influencing yeah. the game of football. Yeah, in general. Okay. He basically created the false nine. Mm-mm-mm. Right? Okay. I think you might you might disagree with me, but yeah. I think Pep was the one that created this false nine position that everybody copied. And in more recent uh, games, I mentioned it in one of the episodes about his uh, his new three two four one hybrid kind of formation. Now everybody is also doing that, right? Arsenal is also copying, Klopp is also copying, and it's working wonders for them, mm. right? So in my opinion, I think what Pep has done with City and how City has evolved mm. again. I, I like, I'm using mm. this word a lot this season, but I, I think it really showed Grealish has matured so much. Um, you know, and how he, you know, despite losing his 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 um his core team, right? The comp- he lost company, he lost Aguero, David Silva left, Fernandino retired. And you think, how are they going to replace them? Yep. Grealish came up. He was, he was so good that Sterling had to be sold to Chelsea. Mm-mm-mm. Akanji, yep. probably another candidate for signing on the season. Akanji has been super yep. this season. So you think about it, um, it's fantastic, right? How how they have been remained so consistent and I don't know. I, it, to me, Man City today, and therefore that that, that concludes why Man City exactly, is exactly. your team of the year. Correct. And Correct. then you know we spoke about the signings because we spoke about the teams. Mm. Uh, but what about the most memorable moment or game for you? What's yours? Why don't you well, say first? Mine. Mine's plain and simple. Mm. I think again at the end of the day we watch football because of that X factor because of the atmosphere Mm -hmm. uh, because of the pool of the game Mm -hmm. and I just want to pull this one out. It is not Liverpool uh, because pool. (laughs) It is Wrexham versus Notts County. Uh. I think that particular game just got everyone's attention and everyone genuinely got excited for Wrexham and if you were a Notts County 
you know fan, you were also genuinely excited. Yep, yep. Yeah. So so I thought that was a memorable one. You had Ben Foster who was vlogging it. You had mm. everybody talking about it. Yes. You had everybody just feeling for that penalty when there was that penalty. So every moment of it didn't even feel like a non-league kind of thing. Exactly. It felt like as yes, if it was you are a professional. Right. I, I got to agree. Yeah, with yeah, you yeah. yeah. So, I mean, so, sorry, sorry if I'm no, 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 just no, chime please, in. Please, please. I think that game kind of showed everybody what football really, really yes, means. Yes, correct. Really correct. I th- I think the, the the what's happening in the Premier League has been over commercialized mm. and all. It's become a business. But the the game between Wrexham and Not- Notts County it kind of brought us back to our senses. Yeah. To realize that hey, this is why we love football so much. And if I may add it, and yes. this is why we want to be in the stadium live. Because, oh yes. Because now in, yes. in most of the, the big matches, you, you just want to be you can correct, correct. watching from the sofa. Yes, the so yeah, no. so, the, mm. so that's mine. You know, Rex yeah. versus North County. Yeah. So so what's so, going to be so touching on touching on the yeah. bring us back to basics, right? The coming back why we love football so much. I think at the end of the day, football also helps to inspire people. Uh, yeah. Isn't it? Right? They they have inspired millions and millions of children they, they out did. of poverty, out yeah, of whatever reasons. Uh, but and to me, I think the, along the same line, I think the 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 fact that Sebastian Haller came back from cancer. He actually beat cancer. Uh, okay, so for those that do, for, do, know, do not know, uh, Haller signed for Blotman this season. Mm. But at the start of the season in July, he was diagnosed with a cancer. Um, and he was out for six months. He had to undergo chemo and all those stuff. Uh, but back in January, right, he started to make his comeback. Mm. And in February, he made his debut. He finally made his debut six months after signing. And this was after cancer. Mm. And to date, to today, he has already played in eighteen games and scored nine goals. Wow! After cancer, yes, and now he's just Dortmund. I just mentioned oh. earlier, just one win away from winning the Bundesliga. That, that's in your face, cancer. I'm just letting exactly. you know. Exactly. So to me, it's like face. if it's not if if this is not the most inspirational moment of the whole season, mm. I don't know what is. Okay. Yeah. So to me, football really inspires, and I think this is a fantastic. You know, uh, a story to inspire yeah. people. Yeah, yeah. Mm. What a nice way to conclude. So yes. there you have it. Those were our opinions. Those were our views. Yep. We're gonna give you more in our next segment, and that one's called "What's What, what with Who's Who." We'll see you for that one. Don't forget to subscribe. Yeah. What's up, my man? No, no. <laughs> I'll, I'll just I'll just stick to the normal one. Hello, people, and this is the segment we like we want to call the What's What, what with Who's Who. If for some reason you skip to this part, we are the four four two dudes, and we are all the way from Singapore, filming in Tampines, mm-hmm. you know, not Tampines. Yeah, we just want to bring that part up. Yep. Um, but now we want to focus on areas around the world of football, mm-hmm. and let's go with one. Yes, you know, and okay. I think that one is so recent. I have to just say it very quickly. Mm. You know, not just quickly, but have to be at the start. It's the racism bit mm. with Real Madrid, okay, and as well as uh, Valencia. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, so what about it? Well, I mean, what happened was that, and, and this was what John showed me earlier mm. uh, before the entire recording. So I saw a video of uh, Vinicius Junior. Okay, so there was a little bit of scuffle going on, mm-hmm. and, and didn't really see what happened. Mm-hmm. But what happened next? All right. What happened next was suddenly, you know, um, VAR was called for, and mm. what they were showing on in the VAR screen uh, was Vinicius Junior doing some form of slap or a sort of a like punch yes. to, to one of the the Valencia dudes. Mm-hmm. So they kept replaying that like pa pa pa, and then you know because of that there was a red card. Mm-hmm. But what the TV showed us there was a prior to that sort of incident Correct. was that he was actually choked. So if you can see on the screen right yeah, now, the picture is shown choked. that he was actually choked. Yeah. And if you watch the video, what the fuck? He actually punched off the guy immediately after manage, yeah. managing managing to wrangle free yeah. from his chokehold. So if you, uh, let me ask you this question: If someone chokes you from behind, yeah, wouldn't what you? What would your response be? Exactly, you you wouldn't. really? I mean, you're not gonna say thanks for choking me. <laughs> you know, what I mean, you're not gonna do that. I mean, someone's choking well, you. Some people are like, yeah, I don't know. I mean, now I don't know <laughs> lah. You know what happens? What happens? But for this case, <clears> you know, I mean. He got choked. Yes, and it was already such an intense atmosphere. Correct, the intense part of the hour mm-hmm. of the game. Mm-hmm. I mean, who wouldn't react the way he exactly. did? Exactly. Yeah, you could say, oh, he could have been calmer, mm-hmm. but still, why? And this is where I go. Why did they not show the prior footage before that slap? Which so leads us to the, the next thing, right? Yeah. So if there, there, there is this. Um, I wouldn't say conspiracy theory, yeah, but yeah. there's this theory that the the the. The VAR referees, all, all the staff that was on duty yes. in VAR, Six they are just, just being racist. Yeah. And they got sacked anyway. Yeah. And, and so the fun fact, I mean, the update is that all six yeah. of them got, got sacked. sacked. 
they got sacked yeah. because of that. And it's not just about them. I think I think this this whole topic of racism came out also because there were a few Valencia fans who were race, who were race racially oh, yeah. abusing uh, Vinicius. And yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. just one game. It's been happening over the whole season. His Vinicius himself has been bringing it up time and time and yeah. time again, but nothing has been done. Yeah. I think it's not just him, right? Um, I think Sterling in the last few years also came mm. out, you know, fighting I, against I racism and all. Yeah. And Vinicius also came out to say in, on his Instagram, they say it is normal. It's not the first time, yeah. not the second, not the third, right? It's actually, it feels like as if it's normal in, in La Liga, yeah. but nothing's been done. Yeah. Prior, I mean, nothing has been done prior to this incident. Mm-mm. But what I'm but very now? happy about okay. is that there's been an outpouring of support for Vinicius. Oh, thank goodness. Right, so if, you, if I was looking at all the pictures. Yes. The, the Barcelona, not Barcelona, uh, Barcelona, Rafinha, Rafinha. Oh, Rafinha. Rafinha came out with support, you know, wow. took off his shirt, showed wow. his support for, for, for Vinicius. Yeah. Not just them, the Real Madrid in, against Valladolid, right, the next okay. game. They all Vin- they all wore Vinny's jersey to wow. come up for the warm up in- before the pre match. Student unity, exactly. Sort of thing. Not wow. just them. The Real Madrid female team did the same thing. Oh. The Real Madrid basketball team did the same thing. They all wore Vinicius Junior's jersey wow. just before their very next games. After this incident, what and a I message. love it. And you're seeing on social, so many players have come out in support for Vinicius. Yeah. Mbappe is one of them. Saka is one of them. Real Ferdinand was very, very vocal. Uh, was very vocal about it. So I, I'm really very happy to see it. And the, I think that the 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 crowning moment, right? Yeah. Was there was a picture that was being captured. Oh, what picture was that? This picture was shown that okay. Vinicius was actually seated next to Fiorentina Perez. Hey, wow, that's quite that's quite something. I mean, if you think about it, right? Yeah. To me, this picture sends a very, very powerful message okay. to La Liga. Wow. It shows that Perez says. This is my player. I'm supporting yeah. my player. Don't mess with me. Yeah. Really don't mess with me. Wow. So to me, that is that is very, oh. very powerful. And I, I love that picture. I really yeah, love yeah, that yeah, picture. Yeah, yeah. Honestly. I mean, you know, it, that, that just shows, you know, yes. unity. And, and we've been rambling about it yep. all the time. But football is just like that. You know, whatever scuffle that is. I mean, remember, we're all here to play football. We're mm. all here to enjoy the sportsmanship of football. Yes. And we're all here because we love that whole atmosphere of football. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I mean, I mean, racism aside, I mean, come on, people. Just enjoy the game. Correct. And he's a fantastic player for Real Madrid. Exactly. He's so, been you know, fantastic this season. I mean, yeah. But you know, speaking of love for football, yeah. I think it just brings us to the next uh, next thing that we want to bring oh, up. What's the next one? Um, so recently, I think Phil Jones was actually oh. offered a testimonial by Manchester United. E- okay. Correct. Okay. But he rejected the tes- testimonial. Oh, why? And his reason is very simple. He said that I'm rejecting it because I think only my family will turn up. Are you? I, I'm not sure whether he meant it as a joke. Yeah. Right. But I don't know. I, I see this as I see this as a very sad episode because. To me, it just showed that this professional footballer has kind of given up on the game, which is very, very. That's sad. what you think, okay? Because he he loves football. That's why he's a professional, right? Yes. Right. He he moved from he did well for Black, his hometown Blackburn, club Blackburn, yep. and then Ferg- Alex Ferguson, no, sir, Alex Ferguson actually spotted the potential. Yep. He bought him over. Yep. I still remember when Fer- when Ferguson bought him. He said, "This Fujian is going to be at the core of our team in the next in the in the in the future for United." He is going to be a very, very important player for United in the future. But obviously things didn't work out yeah. that way. And to see him, you know, stating that I don't want because I don't think anybody will turn up. Yeah. I just feel very sad. Yeah. You know, I mean, even, even as a non-Man United fan. Yes. You know, I, I mean, I, I still think there will be people to go. They will turn yeah. up. Ferguson will definitely yeah, turn yeah, up. Yeah. And who's, who's to say that yeah. Blackburn fans yeah, won't yeah, turn yeah. up, right? And maybe former players as well. Exactly. If you ask me, I think former players Correct. as well. So. Correct. Correct. Wow. Yeah, so so yeah, this is one one to me is a bit sad lah. Yeah, Mm-mm. it is. But you know what, Phil Jones, we we're not uh, United fans, but still uh, big hearts to you. Hopefully, you find yes. love in the next club. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, so that was Phil Jones, and oh, last but not least, uh, I think there's something that's taking place right now. Maybe right now, maybe many of you do not know. Okay, but the FIFA Under Twenty World Cup is currently taking place oh. in Argentina. Oh, I also do know. Yes, so okay. there are a total of twenty four teams. Uh, but what I want to say about these twenty four teams is that you have you have countries who are participating. Yes, which you will probably never see in the senior game. Confirm not Singapore. Yes. Uh, <coughs> Sorry, I just had to say that. If you're wondering why yeah. I'm, I'm, I just yeah. started to shut up. Watch the previous episode. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. So I just let me just sure, sure, some of the teams. Okay, so some of the teams that I just thought very surprising to okay. see in this under twenty World Cup are Fiji. Oh, Fiji's inside. New Zealand's inside. Oh. The Dominican Republic's inside. Okay. Gambia, okay. Guatemala, okay. Honduras, okay. Iraq, okay. and. Uzbekistan. Ah. So these teams, I don't think these are teams that you will see in a senior yeah, game you, you or really listen to the very yeah, yeah. So 
I don't know. I, I see this. I hope I hope that this bodes well for those countries. Mm. And hopefully, you know, as they expand the number of teams for the World Cup, we get to see these teams in the in the senior game. And, as well. and, and, and I think, yeah. you know, it's like a chance to explore new talent. Exactly. Yeah, because you never know who's... And know. embrace more cultures. Yes, yeah, that's right? what I think. I, yes. I think it would just be cool to see uh, perhaps, you know, like a, a Ubik, Ubik in the EPL, for example. Say again. A Ubik. Say again. Ubik. Oh, uh. Oh. Okay. Oh, okay. Uzbek, I think. Dashiki. I don't think it's a Uzbek. I think yeah, it's a no, Uzbek. Actually, it's Uzbek <laughs> or something. But <laughs> you know, it doesn't matter. Like. <laughs> the Dashiki power is done, you know. <laughs> yeah. No, speaking of, you know, speaking of yeah. cultures, I mean, I, think yeah. that, I, mean, I mean, if any Nigerian friends watching out there, you know, I apologize. We feel that we are dissing you and oh, all, but not. no. Oh, okay, no, we just really not. want to embrace yeah, the cultures we, we, and we all. We are, we are. Right, we are. so... Uh, yeah, so that concludes our, yeah. our, epi- our last episode for yeah. this season. But... but Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, so you we, say, you we say, part say, at the same time, you know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so First but time, we have a we have a special episode yes. that's coming up. Okay, so just stick around for that one. But just you know, just make sure you subscribe. Mm-hmm. There you have a notification. But really, this is our last episode. So thank you everyone for following us. Yes, uh, thank we you are so the much. Four four two dudes. dudes, and I'm Ben. I'm John. John, and it's been a pleasure. You know, it's been a pleasure, a pleasure. Don't don't forget about season two. That's right. Season two will start kickstart next season when the all the other professional leagues start. Yeah. Yeah. But before we go, stay tuned for the next special episode where we will focus on the FA Correct. Cup final. An exclusive. Mm-hmm. Ooh, exclusive. Yeah, no. Ooh. We're not scamming you. Huh? I just want to repeat that. <laughs> I, I would just have to repeat yeah. that. Uh, okay. See you next week. Yeah. This is the part where they say, you know, like, stop. Oh, fine.